What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today I am finally filming the long awaited ATIT's version seven comprehensive guide. As you already know, the ATITs is a test that is designed to assess your knowledge of nursing as well as other various disciplines. It's designed to be challenging and it covers a variety of topics that are related to nursing. So they have made it very much more heavily focused on nursing this year. If you're looking to become a registered nurse, then you're going to need to take the ATITs and pass it with flying colors. In this comprehensive guide that I'm filming now, it will help you review all the important material that you need to know, as well as provide some test taking strategies. Let's get started. So let's begin by looking at our T's testing objectives. So as you know, the test of essential academic skills, also known as T's, is an examination that is administered to health science applicants to assess fundamental knowledge that is considered essential for success in health science programs. The T's exam is going to predict the performance of candidates to aid educators to gain knowledge of applicant strengths who are accepted into the health science programs. The most important thing to note is that the T's was updated on June 3rd, 2022 to include much more relevant healthcare program content. These videos are based on the new version seven content plan. So I am gonna help you pass your ATITs. So let's take a look at what's on the ATITs test. The TEAS examination features 170 total test items. 20 of those questions are pre-test questions and are not counted towards your score. Testing is about 209 minutes broken up over four subjects. That includes reading, math, science, as well as English and language usage. Although the T's test is divided into these four categories, the test is scored as a single test with a composition score for each category. This means the applicant cannot retake any specific section of the test in which you may or may not have scored poorly on. Test questions will incorporate multiple select all that apply, fill in the blank numeric answers, ordering correct sequence, and select an area on an image. We will discuss strategies for answering these questions on our test taking strategies video. Let's break down the ATITs test. So the ATITs is available in paper and pencil as well as computerized formats. Each subject is separated with its own time limits. So let's break down what that looks like. So our first section is reading. There's approximately 45 questions within that section and you have approximately 55 minutes to answer those questions. Next, we have mathematics, which is 38 questions that you can answer in 57 minutes. Then we have science, our favorite. We have 50 questions, which can be answered over 60 minutes. And then lastly, we have English language usage, which is 37 questions, which should be answered in 37 minutes. While this all seems to be a lot of information, let's break down specifically what you need to know in each section in order to pass the ATITs. So within the reading portion of the ATITs, it's going to cover three main topics. Number one is going to be key ideas and details, which is 15 questions. Number two is craft and structure, which is nine questions. And number three is integration of knowledge and ideas. And that's also 15 questions. So broken down under each topic, this is what you are going to need to know. So for key ideas and details, you are going to need to summarize multiple paragraph text, inferences and conclusions, understand written directions, locate specific text, apply information to graphs and charts, and sequence of events. For craft and structure, those nine questions are going to include fact and opinions, biases, word and phrases, author's purpose, and author's point of view. 
And lastly, for integration, knowledge, and ideas, those 15 questions are going to include making predictions, comparing and contrasting, evaluating arguments, and integrating data from sources. That's everything you're going to need to know for reading. Let's move on to mathematics. Okay, so the mathematic portions of the ATITs is going to cover two topics. One is numbers and algebra, that's 18 items on the test. And two is measurement and data, that's 16 items on the test. So in numbers and algebra, those 18 questions are going to be converting fractions, decimals, as well as percentages, arithmetic operations, rational numbers, variables, operations with numbers, real world percentages and problems, proportions, ratios, and real world expressions, equations, and inequalities. For the second portion of the test, measurement and data, which is the remaining 16 questions, you are gonna need to know how to interpret tables, charts, and graphs, evaluate data sets, relationships between variables, geometric quantities, and conversions between standard and metric systems. You'll be using that a lot when you are in healthcare. Let's move on to the science portion. So I think science was the biggest portion that was changed this year when it came to the ATITs. The science portion this year for the ATITs is going to cover four different topics. The first topic is human anatomy and physiology. That's going to be 18 questions. Biology is going to be nine questions. Chemistry is going to be eight questions and scientific reasoning is going to be nine questions. So let's break these down. So human anatomy and physiology, those 18 questions are going to cover the systems, respiratory, cardiovascular, digestive, nervous, muscular, reproductive, integumentary, endocrine, urinary, immune, and skeletal systems. All 11 will be covered in the human anatomy and physiology piece. For biology, that's going to be nine items. So that's going to be your cell structure, function, and organization, genetics, the structure of proteins, concepts around Mendel's law of inheritance, macromolecules, and microorganisms in disease. For chemistry, those eight items are going to cover atomic structure, changes in matter, chemical reactions, conditions that affect chemical reactions, uh, solution properties, as well as acid-base balances. And then lastly, for scientific reasoning, those nine items are going to be covering measurement tools, scientific explanation, relationships with objects and processes, as well as the scientific method. That's everything you're going to need to know for the science portion of the ATITs. It's very different in the way that it was structured from the previous version. So make sure you check out those videos on the science portion so that way you have a better understanding of how version seven is different. Let's move on to our last section and that is English and language usage. So let's talk about the last section, which is English and language usage. This is going to cover three different topics. Number one, conventions of standard English. That's going to be 12 questions. Number two, knowledge of language. That's 11 questions. And number three, language and vocabulary to express ideas and writing. That's 10 questions. So let's break these down. So conventions of standard English, those 12 questions are going to cover English spelling, English punctuation, and sentence structure. Knowledge of the language, those 11 questions are going to cover grammar to enhance writing, audience rhetorical context and language, and well-organized paragraphs. And then lastly, using language and vocabulary to express ideas in writing, those 10 questions are going to include basic knowledge of the writing process and meaning of words. That is everything that you're going to need to know 
for the ATIT's version seven portion of the test. So let's look at a couple different things in regards to what you need to bring to the testing center, what not to bring to the testing center, and what to expect the day of testing. So one of the top items that you need to bring with you in order to be successful when taking your ATIT's test. Well, number one, you wanna make sure that you bring a valid photo ID issued by the government. So that could be your driver's license, a passport, or even your green card. Photo credit cards and student IDs are not acceptable forms of identification, so don't bring those with you. You definitely wanna make sure that you have a number two pencil with erasers. No other writing tools are going to be allowed in the testing space. And then lastly, bring information provided by ATITs at ATITstesting.com, such as your login information for the online format. You will need to have this information for the test, so make sure you bring it and you are prepared when you get there. So while you might be questioning why you're unable to bring some of these items, the testing center does not want you to bring these things. Number one is going to be excessive clothing, including coats, jackets, sunglasses, and hats. Clothing will be subject to inspection by the testing proctor, and of course allowances will be made for any kind of religious apparel. Uh, personal items including backpacks, computer cases, duffel bags, and purses will not be allowed inside the testing center. Electronic devices of any kind are not permitted. So that includes your cell phones, your uh, smartphones, and digital watches. If it's electronic, just don't bring it. And then lastly, food and drink. If there is a reason of medical necessity for you to have food or drink inside the testing area, then you would need to provide proper documentation as to why it needs to be with you. Let's take a look at the last thing you need to, need to know, which is what to expect the day of testing. So let's talk about testing day expectations. So number one, you're going to check in. Testing staff is going to take your photo ID, make sure it's government issued, and they are going to document your admittance to the testing location. Then they are going to direct you to your assigned testing seat inside the testing center. The test is proctored. A proctor will monitor for odd and disruptive behavior during testing. If you are found to be disruptive or odd, you will be dismissed and your exam will not be scored. They will provide a calculator. Now, it is a four function calculator, so it's not gonna have any of those big functions you would see on a graphic calculator. Any other form of calculator is not allowed. This calculator will not have any kind of built-in functions and it is going to be the basic of the basic, okay? So be prepared for that you will be provided scratch paper. That scratch paper can be used during the tests and cannot be used before the exam or during breaks. All scratch paper will be returned to the proctor at the end of your test. It's just to protect the test itself. Scheduled and unscheduled breaks. After the mathematics section of the test, you will be provided a 10 minute break. During this break, you will not have access to your personal items. If at any point you need an unscheduled break, what you're gonna do is you're going to raise your hand and the proctor is going to guide you. The timing of your exam is not going to stop. That's very important to know. So any time loss is not going to be made up if you take unscheduled breaks. And then lastly, technical issues. If you have any technical issues that occur from your computer, raise your hand, the proctor will come and assist you. If there are any complaints during the test, please let your proctor know prior to leaving the room on the day of your exam, so that way they can address it if it is definitely something that needs to be addressed. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding the basic introduction of what is going to be on the new ATIT's version seven. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you head over to www.nursechung.com where there are additional resources as well as a lot more details about what to expect on your test. Until next time, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!